Good evening. It is a joy to be with you once again. Fellowshipping with you in our wonderful Lord is recorded in light of the Word of God. What a joy it is for us to come into your home in the Way of Life program, share with you in this informal manner, study of the Word of the Lord. And as far as my part on the program is concerned, I would like to continue with this little bit of an emphasis that we started last uh, uh, program concerning a very, very prevalent thinking among people concerning salvation. Now, you've witnessed to a number of people, as uh, we have, and in our witnessing ministry, we've discovered some things the same as you, that either a person doesn't know where they're going from the standpoint of their own rationale, but they also believe something else. And I'm amazed that this is the case where we, when we live in the time that we do with so much gospel preaching that's going on that people are still very, very adamant in their thinking <clears throat> that they're going to get to heaven by virtue of their own merit. They're going to get to heaven by virtue of what they do. They're going to get to heaven by virtue of who they are. And, you know, it, it, it is just appalling to discover that in our society, right here in the very area in which we live, we don't have to go far, but right here there are individuals, so many of them, that honestly believe, and, and I'm talking with reference to people of integrity, they honestly believe that at the end of their pilgrim journey upon this planet, as they pass off of the physical scene, they're going to go to heaven. They're going to be in the presence of God by virtue of their works, by virtue of their life, by virtue of who they are and what they've done. And now, th these, are, these are not folk that are what we might call riffraff. These are intelligent people. These are folk that uh, hold to a, a fine position in our society, and not that they're any different than anyone else, but it seems as though in a great number of cases, folk that are quite successful as far as this pilgrim journey is concerned, and, and individuals who uh, do have some p positions of uh, real respect and honor from a so society point of view, that they feel specifically in their rationale of thinking that who they are and what they do will give them enough merit before God that God will welcome them into his presence as saved children of his. Now, it is not my intention to hurt or to criticize unduly, but it is my intention to share with you dogmatically what the Word of God has to say on this particular issue of the matter of works saving an individual. Now, I want you to take your Bibles, and I want you to turn with me to a, a, a passage that we've looked at before, to be sure, but in light of this little series that we're dealing with, I want you to see from the second chapter of the book of Ephesians, particularly, a statement that is made in clear language, something that every single person can understand. They're not difficult words. They're not big, long theological words or anything like this. They're just straightforward statements. So I want you to look with me in Ephesians chapter 2. Will you who are watching the Way of Life program, perhaps you are not one that studies the Bible, but if you have a Bible in your home, will you take just a moment at this time? and uh, slip across the room and take it out of the bookshelf or wherever your Bible may be lying. And I want you to turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2 because I, I'm not interested that, that you would just take my word for it. I want you to know exactly what the Bible has to say on this particular issue of your life and my life. Can we merit enough merit by virtue of our life 
whereby we're going to be acceptable before God. So, so you open your Bible now. Open your Bible to Ephesians. That's found in the New Testament. Uh, and turn to the second chapter, Ephesians chapter 2. And notice what God's Word has to say explicitly in verses 8 and 9. Will you do that? Now let me read it as you're following along in your Bibles. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Now notice what verse 9 says. Not of works. Why? Lest any man should boast. All right, now we want to look, we want to put this on the board so that we can uh, uh, carry along in sort of an organized manner. Now, first of all, in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, do works save? Well, the answer is very explicit, isn't that right? It's no, no, absolutely not. Works, your manner of life, what you do, who you are by virtue of your position in society. I don't care whether you're a laborer or whether you have a pro profession uh, and you uh, try to treat your neighbor right, and you ought to do that. But all of these good things, suppose that you are just so busy in um, uh, some kind of uh, humanitarian efforts of helping one another, serving one another, visiting one another, uh, looking after the needs of individuals. All of that is good from the standpoint of our social bracket of life. But friend, we're talking about going to heaven. All of those very, very fine social works will not give us merit whereby we can be accepted before God to be brought in to the presence of God in the heavenlies called a saved life. Now, Ephesians 2, 8 to 9 explicitly tells you this. Now, there's a real danger. <clears throat> there's a real danger with reference to a person believing that works can save. Now, now let's put it down just exactly what the Bible said. Well, what do works do? Well, it tells me that there is a danger that a person is going to boast. Isn't that what your Bible says? Lest any man should boast. You see, there isn't any place for pride when it comes to the matter of standing right before God. And I'm talking about pride from the standpoint of boasting. Now, there is a use of the word pride that carries with it a different connotation. For instance, I, I minister among a group of people, particularly down in the Southland, and, and they have just a little different uh, vocabulary use or vocabulary meaning. And uh, they'll often say this, well, I, I, I'm real proud of that. By virtue of that statement, they are not talking of, about being boastful, but they are talking about being praiseworthy of it. They're thankful. I'm very proud of that. They're thankful. Now, the, the, the book of Ephesians isn't talking about pride in that sense. You see, if an individual feels as though that they can merit enough favor before God by their social standing or their working, why then they inherently believe in their heart. You know, I'm just pretty good. That's right. And uh, uh, I believe I'm a little better than someone else. Because, you see, I'm doing this, and I'm doing that, and I'm doing something else, and that person isn't doing, doing that. Why, you see, I'm much better than that individual. Well, you may be, dear friend, by virtue of social standing. But if you're counting on that, to give you a favorable standing with God. My friend, you're dead wrong. Now, I've noticed something in uh, the few years that I've walked along in the pilgrim journey and tried to, to minister the word of the Lord, that individuals 
seem to give an air at times of superiority. Are you such an individual? Do you feel that you're just a little bit better than someone else by virtue of what you may be doing or by virtue of what you may possess? Do you often um, look down your nose at someone that may not quite have the same social status that you have and consider that person very inferior to you? Now, they may be inferior, inferior to you with reference to your profession, with reference to your executive position. But listen, when it comes to the matter of a spiritual life before God, all of that is out of the picture. You see, there is no respect by God, or God, it says God is no respecter of persons. He doesn't look upon the status as far as our social status, as far as individuals are concerned. He looks upon the heart. And so listen, dear friend, it isn't for you to think that you, by virtue of what you do because of who you are, that you can be saved and go to heaven. The Bible says absolutely not. In fact, there is a contradiction to that by the Bible. It says, for by grace are you saved. It is not that but it is that. It is faith. That is what our passage in Ephesians 2 says. Isn't that right? Now, again, let's read it. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Through faith. And that doesn't come from yourself. It is a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Now, I'm thinking very seriously about giving you a diagram of this on the blackboard next time just as the Greek uh, outlines it. And I think it might be profitable for you even though you might not understand the Greek, yet we'll put down the English with it. Now, you just might keep that in mind because we'll probably diagram this for you next time from the original language. Now then, in all fairness, we should turn to a second passage of Scripture, which has been used by many to contradict this and point out, say, now, look, the Bible has in it contradictions. And when it comes to the matter of being saved, by faith alone, oh, no. I can prove to you, they say, that the Bible clearly teaches it's not faith alone, but it's faith plus works. Now, in all fairness, let's take our Bibles and turn to that passage and see if we do have a contradiction with reference to what the Bible teaches concerning this matter of being saved by faith and saved by faith alone in light of what Ephesians chapter 2 uh, has to say. Now turn with me to James. James chapter 2. And I want to read a few verses here. In fact, I'm going to read quite a few verses from verse 14 down through verse 26 because I want to give you the whole context of this issue that People will take this passage right here to contradict this passage. I think time we get through, you are, will be uh, well convinced if you're going to take the, if you're going to believe the Bible at all, that there isn't any contradiction. Now let me give begin reading with verse 14. What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say, notice now the profession, say he has faith and have not works? Can faith save him? According to Ephesians chapter 2, 8, 9, that's exactly what saves him. Isn't that right? Now, what's James saying here? Follow along. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, 
and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? Now you see, he makes a statement, and then he makes an illustration. He gives an illustration to support what he's just stated in verse 14, and that illustration is is, some, is simply this: that if a person says he has faith, but he doesn't have a work. He doesn't have a walk that supports it. And he gives the illustration, suppose someone has need. And you say to them, well, you go ahead, but you do not do in order to help that need. Well, what is the profit? Now notice verse 17. Even so faith, even so faith, if it has not works, you hear that? If faith does not have works, it's dead. Being alone. You can say, isn't that pretty clear? What you've said about Ephesians chapter 2 is contradicted with reference to verse 17 of James 2. Isn't that right? <laughs> it's faith plus works. Let's go on. Yes, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. All right, show me thy faith apart from your works, and I'll show thee my faith by my works. Did you hear that? One is professing, and the other is proving. In other words, he's just simply saying this. All right, you say, you say that you have faith apart from works. Well, if you do, I'm going to say this to you. I'll show you my faith that's demonstrated by works. See that? There's a great difference here. One is a profession of faith alone. The other is faith plus proof of it. All right? Now then, notice verse 19 and 20. Thou believest that there is one God. Good. That's fine. The devils or the demons, they also believe, but they tremble. And you see, someone saying, yeah, I believe. <laughs> yeah. So do the demons believe. But there's a reaction to their belief. Is there any reaction to your belief? But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith, without works is dead. By this time you ought to be getting the point. If there is faith that is professed but faith that is not proven That faith's wrong. Isn't that right? What does this faith up here do? For by grace are ye saved through faith. That kind of faith saves. This kind of faith is dead. James says that. Now then, let me just read hurriedly, verse 21 through 26. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect, complete? And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, <clears throat> and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. You see then how that by works a man is justified, <clears throat> and not by faith only? Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works, when she had received the messengers and sent them out another way. For as a body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works or proof of it is dead also. Profess all you want to. Now then, on the other side, if you profess, but you don't have a, do not have a life that proves it, your faith is not biblical faith. Don't you see that? Now then, 
I have listened to a tape of an interview of a brother here in the city that interviewed, and I am sorry to say it, but it's true, interviewed a young man, not so young, but interviewed a man that had studied out at Northland Bible College. And you know what that fellow has done? That fellow has gone so far off on his rationalism that he had the audacity to state on that tape, well, you've got to have enough works. <laughs> Just as if a person is going to be saved a little by, by degrees with reference to his works. Now that young man is out on thin ice and he's already slipped through. He's so dead wrong. Now he didn't learn that at Northland. No, sir. That's his own arrogant, egotistical doctrine, which is unscriptural. You see, the Bible in James chapter 2 is not proving that there's works in contradiction to faith. But the book of James is emphasizing just exactly what the book of Ephesians is emphasizing. We're going to go back there to it in just a moment. That faith is that which is to be manifested, that which is to be proven, that which is to be shown, that which is to be illustrated. First, listen, people. That kind of faith is going to send you to hell. That kind of faith is going to send you to heaven. There we've got all kinds of profession. But if your faith is only profession and not possession, you're lost. And James is emphasizing the aspect of the possession. That's proven. Now turn back with me to Ephesians chapter 2, where we have James so wonderfully confirming, uh, confirmed by the Apostle Paul. Now look, look at it in verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ, excuse me, created in Christ Jesus. What for? Under good works. Let's just see that. I'm not saved by works, but I'm saved by a faith that's a living faith that is proven in my walk. Let me read now from the book of Romans. Turn with me to Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. I'm going to put that down here. Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17, and how this passage right there confirms both of these. Here we have it now. Notice, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it's the power of God unto salvation. Now get this. To everyone who believes, not believes and works, to everyone that believes, to everyone that has faith, to the Jew first and also to the Greek, all mankind in other words, whether you're Jew or whether you're Greek, and if you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile or uh, right in here, it's uh, classified as uh, the, the Greek, but not from Greece. You're either a Jew or a Gentile. And I'm told that a person is saved by believing in the gospel. That's what I have here. Now then, verse 17 is going to prove what James means. <clears throat> For therein, in the gospel, is the righteousness of God revealed. Now watch it. Revealed from faith to faith. From the platform of faith unto a work of faith. To a walk of faith. All right, now let's prove that now. The last part of our 17. The just. Those that are saved. The just shall what? Profess to have faith. <laughs> that isn't what your Bible says. The just shall what? Live live. How? By faith. A living faith. A living faith 
that manifests itself in the walk. No, friend. Works can't save you. Absolutely not. If you think you're going to make it to heaven by your merit, if you think you're going to make it to heaven by your position, if you think you're going to make it to heaven by your position, you're going to wind up in hell. You're going to burn. You're lost. Now, in contrast, if you think you're going to go to heaven by saying, oh, yes, I'm saved. Oh, yes, I've trusted Christ. Oh, yes, I'm a Christian. Oh, yes, I'm a believer. If you say that, and that's all you have, you too are going to hell. You're just as lost as lost can be. That's right. But if you have trusted, if you have believed in your heart and in your life and the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ, how he died for your sin, was buried and rose again, that wonderful person, if you honestly believe that, then you're going to have a new life. Because my Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. You see, he's got a life, a faith that proves it because of his walk. Friend, you're lost if you're trusting in works. You're lost if all you do is profess Christ. But you're saved if you have a heart's faith in Christ whereby you've got to walk light of the word of God. As newborn babes now, desire the sincere milk of the word that you might grow up in this wonderful from faith unto faith walk of life. Prove your faith. <laughs> Trust you enjoyed this type of Bible teaching and cordially invite you to join us at Northland Bible Chapel. Meetings are held Sundays from 10 a.m. till 12 noon and again from 7 to 8 p.m. in the evening. It would be a special joy to have you visit and get acquainted with us. And don't forget what Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me.